Hi, and welcome to this video tutorial on how to train object detection models using Sentisite.ai. First of all, you will need a dataset with uh, labeled objects. I already have a dataset with uh, three kinds of objects, jeans, shorts, and trousers. If you don't have a labeled dataset, you'll have to upload the images and label the objects yourself. There will be a separate video tutorial on image labeling, but the procedure is rather simple, so you can also explore it yourself. Basically, what you need to do is to right-click on an image, select labeling, draw bounding boxes around the objects of interest, and enter their label name. Once the images are labeled, you can start training. Just click Train Object Detection. Here you can enter the model name, the training time, and the time for stop condition. This time will be used uh, to determine how long the model will be training if there is no improvement. In object detection, uh, the model accuracy is uh, most commonly evaluated by mean average precision, or MAP. So if this MAP value does not improve on validation set for, uh, in this case, 60 minutes, the model training will automatically stop. Notice that the default training time for object detection model is much longer than for classification. We estimated that it takes around 6 hours or 360 minutes to train a good object detection model. So if, if you are not sure what uh, training time at and stop condition values to choose, you can just leave them at the default values. Here you can see the number of images for each specific label that will be included into the training. If you want to exclude some label from training, you can unselect this checkbox. Notice that some images might contain uh, several labels, for example, jeans and shorts, so these images will still be included into the training, except the model will train for shorts, but it will not train for genes in these images. So that's why these numbers uh, do not match. If you switch to advanced view, you can set a few additional parameters. Just like in multi-label classification, you can select user-defined validation set and uh, validation set size. Uh, in object detection, you can also select to include unlabeled images as negative samples. In this case, I don't have any uh, unlabeled images. However, if I select uh, one of the labels, uh, these images will be considered as unlabeled. Uh, however, I can still uh, choose this checkbox to include them into training as negative samples. Here you can also select the model size. We usually recommend selecting a large model size because uh, training time for uh, small and large models is usually similar. However, the accuracy for large model is usually better. However, the inference time for small and medium model is faster than for large model. So if you are interested in fast inference times, you should select one of the smaller models. Once all the parameters are set, you can click Start to start training the model. You can track the progress in the Train Models uh, tab. After approximately 20 minutes of object detection model training, you can uh, view the learning curve for the model being trained. On the left side, you can see the train loss values in blue and the validation loss values in green. On the right side, you can see the validation mean average precision values in green. We select the best model based on the validation mean average precision. And uh, the model we selected is denoted by the red dashed line. If you think that this model is already good enough, uh, you can just click stop training and keep the current model. Once the model training is finished, you can click uh, View Training Statistics to see the model's performance. The performance is divided into Train and Validation tabs. Here you can find several statistics measures, 
such as precision, recall, F1, and mean average precision. Please note that uh, statistics measures marked by a star depend on uh, score thresholds. In the basic view, we use optimized score thresholds that you can see here. Uh, if you switch to the advanced view by clicking here, you can set these uh, score thresholds yourself. But before we do that, uh, let's have a look into the actual predictions. You can do this by clicking here. In the predictions window, you can see the ground truth bounding boxes in black with their label displayed on the upper right corner and the predicted bounding boxes in various colors with their label displayed on the upper left corner. We only report those predicted bounding boxes whose uh, score exceeds uh, the score threshold. If you are using the optimized score threshold, uh, these scores should exceed uh, the score thresholds that you could see here in the optimized score thresholds table. Furthermore, we report intersection of the reunion or IOU value. This value shows how much the predicted bounding box overlaps with the ground truth bounding box. In this case, they overlap by around 80%. If the IOU value exceeds a predefined threshold, which is by default 50%, then the prediction is considered to be correct. Otherwise, it's considered to be incorrect. We color the text of uh, correct predictions in green and the text of uh, incorrect predictions in red. Notice that the text of the bounding box frame does not uh, mean that prediction is correct or incorrect. Actually, the color of the bounding box frame only depends on the label, and you can change the uh, label color here. So, for example, you can select a light blue color for uh, jeans, and uh, in this case, uh, the prediction color for uh, jeans will be light blue. Notice that sometimes you might face uh, labeling mistakes. For example, uh, this prediction seems to be correct because uh, there is uh, trousers in this uh, location. However, uh, these trousers were not labeled by a black uh, ground truth bounding box. So that's why this prediction is considered uh, incorrect. Also notice that uh, for a prediction to be considered uh, as correct, uh, the label of the ground truth bounding box has to match the label of predicted bounding box. In this case, uh, the labels do not match, therefore the IOU value is zero and the prediction is considered to be incorrect. You can filter out images where all the predictions were correct by using this filter. Uh, for the image to be filtered uh, here, uh, all the ground truth bounding boxes have to be covered by correct uh, predicted bounding boxes. Uh, if at least one uh, ground truth bounding box is not predicted or predicted incorrectly, the image will be filtered into incorrect set. For example, uh, let's uh, zoom into this image. Uh, one of the uh, predicted bounding boxes is correct. However, there are some ground truth bounding boxes that are not predicted in this image. Therefore, this image is filtered as incorrect. Now, let's have a look into the advanced view of model statistics. The advanced view allows you to see the learning curves, to change the intersection over union threshold, and to choose whether to use optimized uh, score thresholds or whether to set a uh, custom score thresholds. If you set a high score threshold uh, for some label, then uh, the number of uh, predicted bounding boxes uh, for this label in an image will be uh, lower because uh, only the bounding boxes that exceed this score threshold will be shown. However, uh, since uh, the confidence score of these bounding boxes will be high, the ratio of correct predictions will be uh, higher. 
So in other words, uh, the precision uh, for this label will be higher. On the other hand, uh, if you set uh, the score threshold for some uh, particular label to be lower, the number of predicted bounding boxes for this label will be uh, higher because all bounding boxes whose score exceed uh, the score threshold will be shown in an image. So uh, the ground truth bounding boxes will uh, be more likely to be covered by uh, predicted bounding boxes. However, however uh, the ratio of correct predicted bounding boxes will be lower. Uh, in other words, uh, the recall will be higher, but the precision will be lower. You can see the trade-off between precision and recall uh, for a selected label in this plot below. You can hover the mouse uh, on, the, on any point in the plot uh, to see the exact precision, recall, and F1 values for this specific score threshold. You can set this uh, score threshold simply by uh, clicking on the plot. Notice that uh, the statistics tables uh, will be updated according to the new score threshold. Just as in classification, you can uh, also set whether to use the best or the last model. As I explained before, uh, the best model is uh, the one that has the highest mean average precision on validation set. And the last model is always uh, the one that was saved in the last iteration of the training. Similarly, as for classification, you can download the predictions on train and validation sets by clicking this button here. The download will be prepared in the background and downloaded as soon as it's ready. Once the download preparation is finished, you can re-download it anytime by clicking here and here. The downloaded zip file will contain the predictions in JSON format and a folder with images where the bounding boxes are drawn on top of the image. Finally, you have uh, two options for using the model. First option is to download an offline version of the model. You can do this by clicking here and it will download a 30-day free trial uh, offline model. If you like this free trial, you can visit our sentisite.ai uh, website to buy a license. Notice that uh, the offline version of the model requires a Linux operating system. There will be a separate tutorial how to use the offline models. The second option is to use the online model. You can do that either by uh, clicking here and using the web interface, or you can visit our user guide and check out uh, the code samples for using the online model via our REST API. To test the model via web interface, just click make a new prediction and uh, select a, a group of photos. The predictions are displayed similarly as in view statistics window. You can download these predictions either as images with bounding boxes or as a JSON file. You can also select whether to use the best or the last model and whether to use the optimized or custom thresholds. So this is all I wanted to share about training an object detection model using Sentisite.ai. Thanks for watching.